on, it's Brian with Brian's Farming Videos and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a little bit different, it's not really a vlog. Today we're going to be talking about the MT875E Challenger Tractor. Ohio Ag was nice enough to bring this down this fall and let us use it for a little while. It's still here, it's getting ready to leave, so I thought I'd make a quick video on it. We ran this tractor for approximately 50 hours, so kind of got a pretty good handle on how it operates, what we think of it, and uh, maybe it's strong suits and where it could maybe use some improvement. So thought we would go over that today. Alright, before we get to talking about our thoughts on the tractor and what, uh, what we liked and disliked about it, let's talk about a little bit about the statistics of this tractor. This machine has a 16.8 liter Agco engine. It's a lot of motor, a lot of displacement. Pumping out 590 horsepower. Uh, that is flywheel horsepower, PTO horsepower. Let me check here. I'm pretty sure it's 450, might be 425. I'm pulling these right off the internet. So uh, 425 on the PTO. This one is equipped with a PTO, so that was that was nice to have. Track Challenger tractors. They are actually made in uh, Minnesota, in Jackson. So they are USA made, so that's pretty cool. Uh, machine has a 330 gallon fuel tank. Uh, the def fluid tank is 30.5 gallons. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says the weight, which I'm guessing that's the base weight before you start adding weights. I'm not sure on that. It says it's 42,596 pounds. With this being the higher horsepower one, it is loaded down with weight. It is very heavy, so it's specced pretty heavy right now. Oh, it's 12 cylinders. That's 16.8. That's 12 cylinders. So just thought I'd throw that out there. That's a little bit on the statistics of it. So now let's walk around the machine and talk about what we like and don't like. So if you're not familiar with two track system uh, ch tractors, they kind of steer a little bit like a bulldozer. Uh, one side will quit spinning. One side will turn when you're uh, running the steering wheel. Uh, I guess it'd be more like a zero turn lawnmower if you're more familiar with one of those. So like it or hate it, that's just how they are. Uh, they have their benefits and their drawbacks. But one of the things I really liked about the machine on the outside, back here is very open, very easy to get to everything. All your hydraulics are just right there. So that's just super easy to get to. Hitch is really accessible. There's nothing in the way here. Now this also doesn't have a three point mount mounted hitch uh, i believe that's an option with these if it did you know you would have something in the way but it's not there right now um you got 12 volt trailer lights iso bus pretty standard stuff back here pto uh, i believe this is a category 5 hitch it is extremely extremely heavy duty and then uh then you're, there's your remotes so yeah everything's easy to get to i like that simple moving on over here Pretty much every two track tractor I've been in is like this, but extremely easy to get into. I know some of the four track tractors, um, not so much. It's not hard to get into them, but I mean, you gotta basically climb a little bit of a ladder. So this one, I mean, you can do without holding on to any railing or anything, nothing to it. Uh, one thing I really like about it, this machine has a catwalk all the way around the outside. Easy to get to everything, easy to clean your windows get all the way around this machine and do things like install your your CB antenna or your Midland antenna but yeah you have no excuses to have dirty windows other than you're just lazy like us this right here that plate that mount right there that is for your GPS antenna so it does not come with one of those that's just a accessory rail basically to put your antenna and it has your wiring looks like it's pre-wired for for GPS. Getting into the cab. Inside the cab here, it's pretty standard. Um, this is an older style cab. This is not like the 1000 series Challenger that I'm used to. The 1000 series cab is a little bit more luxurious inside. This cab is much more like the, uh, the 685 that dad plants with. Uh, maybe just not quite as fancy inside but that's okay it's, it's easy to use um, everything's laid out very pretty well very functional uh, you got your power shift right here there's your gear pattern there so right now we're neutral 
forward and then you use these buttons to go up gears and you got all your hydraulic remotes here PTO so yeah pretty simple throttle this this machine does have the like a fuel management system in it to where you can use preset fuel ranges but it's not like the E23 where not preset fuel ranges preset RPM ranges but it is not like the E23 and that 8400 that we were demoing um, it, the the E23 John Deere transmission performed much more like an IVT, whereas this is still very much so, a, you know, your standard power shift transmission. But yeah, you are controlling the fuel, and if you're not playing with that using just what you need, you will use a lot of fuel. So, I mean, it's a 600 horsepower, 12 cylinder, 16 liter engine. So I mean, you're going to use some fuel. Um, if you've never seen a steering wheel on a track Challenger, that's what you're dealing with. I mean. <laughs> kind of it always seems like it throws everybody for a loop first time they see it because all your all your radio controls are there um i don't ever really use them i don't listen to the radio a whole lot um so not, not a huge deal but seems like that's the first thing people notice when they get in one of these for the first time uh, up here we do have your accessory rail where you would mount your gps monitor your planning monitor any kind of accessories you would be adding to this this is on a slide loosen this Adjust your monitors i like that get your hookups right there for juice Climate control, I mean, basic stuff. Up there you got your radio, your lights, um, hazard lights, stuff like that. And of course you have a buddy seat, which folds down and you have like a workspace cup holder. Storage, and yeah, that's basically the cab in a nutshell. And it's, it's got space, but like I said, this is not a, a luxury cab by any means. Um, this is an older design cab. I think it's been on, uh, this is the E series, pretty sure it was on the C. I don't know about the B. The B, it might have had a different cab. Let's turn the key on for a second. Actually, we'll just start the tractor. There's your console, what you're looking at. So we got our uh, RPM, speed, what gear we're in, hours. This thing over here, this is like your brain for your tractor. It's where you control your hydraulics, uh, just basically everything, where you see your st stats and everything. Now, that does not steer, that is not an auto steer monitor. You're not going to make AB lines with that, you're not going to have any guidance. But it does keep track of your information. So it is where you adjust your hydraulics, so it does its job. It's not the most user friendly interface in the world. There's a tractor, let's talk about likes and dislikes. So, um, on the inside, uh, like I said, the cab's nothing to get super excited over, but there's also nothing wrong with it. It works fine. Um, it's not uncomfortable. It's a little noisy, not terribly. Uh, the 1038 really spoils <laughs> shit. It's a it's a very nice cab, but uh, this I, I don't like this this monitor. I don't know. I can't remember what it's called now, but I do not like those. Uh, those need to go away. Which they are phasing that that display out. Um, it's just not the most user friendly. Um, you can figure it out. You just got to turn your buttons or turn your dial. It's like if you wanted to control your hydraulics, you click this. You switch to, like, let's say you want to adjust hydraulic three. So that's how that's how you would do that. It's not it's not bad. It's just not my favorite. Other dislikes: uh, the transmission. It's a little. It's not the smoothest thing in the world. But I'm also used to an IVT. As far as power shift goes, it's not bad. Other dislikes, I do wish it came with auto steer. It's pretty much a standard feature on about every tractor now, bigger tractors. The auto steer would be built into the monitor that you would con that controls the tractor basically. That wasn't the case on the uh, on this series or the older challengers like Dad 685 for example. He had to put a tremble monitor in that for steering. So I mean that was just kind of how, how they did things then. Uh, if you look at the newer challengers like the Thousand series, it has auto steer in it from the factory. The 700 series track tractors, like a 743 for example, it has auto steer from the factory. It has the same monitor that my 1038 has. So I mean, I, I'm fairly confident that this series tractor, the 800s, they will have auto steer in them from the factory eventually. But right now they don't, and that's just kind of it's a little disappointing. Uh, tractors aren't cheap, so it, it stinks to buy one and have to put $10,000 worth of auto steer on it drop this down because the sun's right there shining right in here so see, look, it's got sun shades all the way around <sighs> i think it's like the third time i've ever used those on any tractor well, look at you there plug your auxiliary in 
to listen to tunes, I guess. Um, other dislikes, this would be on like any two-track tractor, and this did not happen to us, but we have had it happen with previous two-track machines we've had before. Going through mud or going around mud, our experience is best to go through the mud, not try to go around it, because once you're tired, say this track's in mud and this one over here is on dry land, once this one slips, this one will turn you right into the mud and you will be, st will be stuck. So we've always went through mud when we had track tractors, not around it. That's just, that's the nature of the beast there. Uh, you, you should know that going into them. That is not Agco's fault, it's not John Deere's fault. That's just, that's just how they are. The things I like about the machine, it's simple. I mean, this part's not, but you don't have to use that to use the tractor for the most part. Once it's set, I can tell anyone to get in here, they're gonna be able to figure it out. Hey, push this over, click that button to shift. Nothing to it. Other things I like, like I said, I like that catwalk outside. It's got pretty decent visibility. Um, you can see pretty good here. That, that hood's wide, it's not too bad to see around though. Uh, one disadvantage of the catwalk is you do lose some visibility there, but you can see your drawbar very well. Which I, I like that. Another thing I like, this one has a PTO. That is an option though, so not all of them will have a PTO. Power wise, never hurt for power. That being said, I wasn't exactly pulling high demand implements. Like I wasn't pulling a 15 shank ripper or anything like that. We pulled a 30 foot turbo max and that grain cart. That, that number for 1300 bushel cart. It handled those extremely well with the turbo max. We were barely sipping any fuel because we didn't have to. We were just idling at like 1300 RPMs. I'll put a card in the video now that'll have this tractor in action with the turbo max and with uh, with that cart I believe so you can see like in the field I talk about what kind of fuel we're using what kind of speed I'm getting um, see so that would probably be the place to put this other things I like tractor rides amazingly smooth like I was thoroughly impressed now keep in mind this tractor's heavy so we were going across the corn stalks running the cart full speed didn't matter weren't feeling any bumps but like I said this thing's heavy so uh, that that definitely helped with the ride. <clears throat> uh, one other thing I kind of didn't really like the best, uh, the steering's jerky for the grain cart. Now, granted, this is a grain cart application. Um, other other ways of using it, it might not be bad. But that and like while we did get to use it 50 hours, uh, I'm sure. Once we got to hang out a little bit more, that would maybe be easy. Like towards the end there, we were getting a lot more comfortable with the machine, and it did better. But at first, we were extremely jerky with it, especially going from a front wheel assist tractor to this one. Um, other things I missed when, when we run the cart with this machine, I missed the pedal mode that the 1038 has. Um, it's, the 1038 just seems to be a better cart tractor, but when you start getting into 1300, 1600 bushel carts, you might need more tractor, and this one did run it just fine. Uh, like I said, the ride was great. And with the Turbo Max, it also ran, I mean, it, it ran it great. Only thing I will say, we run the Turbo Max in anything, like field work wise. You kind of have to watch how you turn. I mean, you can turn, this is, it could be like a zero turn lawnmower. You can sit here and spin in a circle. But you're going to burn up the ground. Uh, whenever I'm running the Turbo Max, I usually don't slow down when I turn. I just whip it right around in a front wheel assist tractor. With this, I wouldn't slow down because you just burn it up so bad. And sometimes that might not come out with one pass. So that's just something you kind of got to think about. You just got to know what you're running in that circumstance. Uh, that's easily preventable. Pull this thing out of, the sh out of the sun a little bit. Yeah, as far as power, like I said, we never got into a circumstance where we ran out of power. This is not our tillage practices that we would need this big of a tractor at the moment. One of the reasons why we were trying this tractor we were looking at maybe a tillage tractor. It probably would have been a smaller horsepower version of the same frame size. And this just happened to be what our high mag dealer had, so that's what they let us use. One of the things we were thinking about was this: would this be a good strip till machine? Um, I think it would. I think it would be just fine on a 24 row strip till bar or a 16 row. I would love to run a 24 row, and we would probably need a tractor about this size to do that, unfortunately. So that's kind of what we were trying to keep in mind, I guess, running it, but. Power-wise, I don't know how well to pull one because we don't have one. If you do have a 24-row strip till bar, pulling with one of these, I'd love to hear how, how well it performs at heavier ground or maybe maybe ground with just a little bit of a grade. That's what kind of worries me. And these sandy river bottoms, uh, it'll pull just fine. 
I'm fairly confident. That's another thing you gotta watch. Once a two track tractor, you can tear the crap out of your driveway. But that stuff you just get to hang of, you get used to it, you get better with it. Like I said, just looking by what Agco's doing with the 7 Series, I fully expect to see this thing with a probably getting an upgraded cab and whatnot eventually. And I would love to see it with an IVT. I think that would be great. Um, the IVT is a very, very good uh, at saving fuel, using what you need to use, and that would be great. Power shifts, they pull great, but um, I mean, at the end of the day, if an IVT will do the same thing. Man, I've been saying IVT this whole video. CVT. IVT is John Deere. CVT transmission. That's what I keep meaning to say. At the end of the day, if a CVT transmission will do the same then um, and save more fuel, then that's what I want to use. So I would love to see the CVT in here. But other than that, that's pretty much it inside as far as long-term use and stuff. One thing that worries me, look at all this stuff under that hood. The engine's way down here. There's like, I'm pretty sure this thing has four turbos on it. Uh, from what I understand, it takes a long time just to get to the block of that machine if you got to work on it. That kind of worries me. Um, not sure what kind of track record this Agco engine has after, you know, a few thousand hours. I don't know. These are expensive tractors. If we were going to buy one of these new, uh, it would stay here for a long time if we were buying it outright. So that's something that I try to take into consideration is how easy is it to work on. Um, the track systems. Uh, I know with our 7 Series we had issues with these bogies. Uh, I don't know if that's still an issue or if that's been resolved. We haven't had any issues in the time we've had it. But like I said, we only had it 50 hours. Now I will say the old one, that we, the other one we had experience with, we would lose one of those like every 50 to 100 hours. So uh, that was an older series. So maybe that's been resolved. Look at, look at all the weights on there. Heavy. Smooth ride though. These transmissions that are in these, these are these are pretty good transmissions. So I guess really the only thing that I would worry about as far as long-term use would be that motor. I, like, I just don't know enough about them yet as far as long-term use. You still see a lot of them with a lot of hours. Um, they seem to be running okay. So, But I do know the series before this, they were using a cat engine. I've got a lot of experience with cat engines. I like those. But uh, now they have the Agco engine, which makes sense. You're making a tractor, you make an engine, you might as well put your engine in your tractor. So the tracks look like they're oil baths, so that, that's nice. You know, you don't have to grease it every day, uh, but you do need to check your oil baths. So don't want to run them bad boys out of oil. That would be bad. Lighting package. This thing seems to have a pretty good lighting package on it. I mean, that, that's stuff that you can adjust, obviously, depending on how you order the machine. But no complaints in the lighting department on this tractor, so that was nice. Just trying to think if there's anything else that I can think of, like or dislike. There's not not a whole lot coming to mind. It just seemed like a really good high horsepower tractor. Um, like I said, we we're in the process of getting into strip till. We were already in strip. If we were already strip tilling and had our had a 24 row bar, I'd be a lot more interested in purchasing this. But as it stands, we have a 12 row bar. We're just kind of dipping our feet into it. So, uh, I mean, for those of you wondering, this is not the tractor that we bought. A few videos back I said we had made a decision on which tractor we were getting between 1038 and 8400R and this, this is not, this is not the machine. Um, so just want to get that cleared up now. You guys want to see a video on the Unverfirth 1319 cart we used this year? Might do a video review on it before it goes back. It is going back sometime here soon I think so that could be the next review video but that's it for this one uh, thanks for watching guys i'm sure i forgot to cover something if so let me know in the comments and yeah thanks for watching